and good evening, AP Physics students. Mr. Kirsten coming at you here with Darth Vader once again for yet another installment of this strange quantum world uh, that uh, we have explored. That's right, we're kind of switching over to the dark side of, of physics, quantum mechanics. And as Darth Vader always says... That's right, that's right. So this strange world of quantum mechanics continues here. And we're going to talk about the contribution uh, a guy by the name of de Broglie made uh, around 1923. So again, when you think of origin of quantum mechanics, you're thinking 1900, 1920, somewhere in this era. Now, we learned last time that photons have momentum. Right? And this was crazy. How can something without mass have momentum? That's just really, really weird. Well, a lot of turn of the century physicists didn't know what to do with these ideas except come up with more ideas, all right? And here's what de Broglie said. De Broglie said, hey, if photons have momentum, okay, physicists, you can practically fill this in. Then particles can have a wavelength. Okay, if something that's a wave like a photon or light can have momentum like a particle does, why can't particles have a wavelength? And guess what equation he came up with? He came up with this mind-blowing equation. The wavelength of a particle is equal to Planck's constant divided by its momentum. And that's how he got his PhD. Isn't that crazy? I mean, look at this. If it weren't so crazy of an idea, you, were th you would think it's too, too simple. Uh, but particles can have a wavelength. Now, what do we mean by the wavelength of a particle? Well, if a, wave, if a particle has a wavelength, it can do anything that another wave could do. Like, it could constructively and destructively interfere with itself. Much like how, you know, if you have a wave going this way on a string and a wave going this way on a string, right, they can cancel each other out. Well, as it turns out, particles uh, can do that as well. Uh, particles can diffract. They can go through, they can do things like double slit diffraction where a particle uh, seemingly goes through both gates, at both holes at the same time. Um, this is just really weird stuff, all right? So, um, yeah, it's really weird, uh, but it's also really cool and can lead to a lot of good stuff. What do you think, Darth? The Emperor does not share your optimistic appraisal of the situation. All right, well, well, the Emperor may not share uh, the optimism of quantum mechanics, but uh, everyone else in the physics world does. So, so enough about this. Here's the big idea. The Broglie wavelength, particles can have a wavelength, and here how, is how it's defined. Let's jump in and solve a problem here uh, using the Broglie wavelengths, and uh, it is going to be problem uh, 30, uh, 39 from chapter 27. So in this problem, we are looking for a voltage, okay? Um, and this problem says, uh, what voltage would an electron have to be accelerated through so that the wavelength of this electron uh, would be 0 0.24 nanometers. Uh, again, so this is strange. We thought electrons were particles. How can uh, they have a wavelength, right? Well, here's how uh, we would do this. Um, okay, let's go ahead and plug in our equation here. The wavelength of this electron would have to be h divided by its momentum. Now, for a quote-unquote particle with mass, its momentum is just mv. So the wavelength of this electron would equal Planck's constant divided by the mass of the electron times the speed at which it's traveling. Okay. So if we rearrange this uh, equation a little bit, uh, just do a little algebra here, we would get that the velocity of the electron, this is a little v, not a big v for voltage, would be equal to Planck's constant um, divided by the mass of the electron times the uh, wavelength of this electron. 
okay? So again, notice our terminology gets confusing here. We're talking about both the mass of the electron and the wavelength of the electron. A little particle wave duality, we call that here. Thinking of things as both particles and waves uh, at the same time. And these two ideas together would be like if Luke Skywalker and Anakin Skywalker joined forces. Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy. <laughs> All right, so uh, if an electron did have this velocity, through what potential difference, through what voltage would we have to accelerate it? Well, uh, that sounds like uh, potential energy. Uh, being set equal to kinetic energy. In other words, the potential energy that an electron would acquire being accelerated through some voltage uh, would equal one-half m uh, v squared here, where m is the mass of the electron, v uh, is the speed of the electron, which we have solved for up here. Speaking of up, up here, let's take this and plug it in here, all right? And we are going to get... Uh, charge of an electron times the voltage through which it's accelerated through is equal to uh, mass of the electron uh, divided by 2 times this whole thing squared. Planck's constant squared, mass of the electron squared, times the wavelength squared, just like so. And if we solve this uh, expression for voltage, we would get mass of the electron divided by 2 times the charge on the electron times Planck's constant squared divided by the mass of the electron squared but I'm gonna cancel this squared with this guy here alright so there's a squared there that cancels out uh, times the wavelength of the electron squared now uh, we're gonna uh, do uh, some algebra here uh, so on top we have Planck's constant 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 squared, uh, and on the bottom here, uh, which I hope you guys can see, we have 2 times uh, the charge on an electron, uh, times the mass of an electron, times the wavelength, which is um, uh, 0.24 times 10 to the minus 9th squared. Can you guys see that? Yes, you can see that. So that's a lot of numbers there, but basically if you plug all of that in, you get that the electron has to be accelerated through a potential difference of 26 volts in order to acquire a speed uh, so that its de Broglie wavelength will be equal to 0.24 uh, nanometers. Yes, that, that is the truth. So, yes, nice work, Darth Vader, and nice work, uh, physicists. Any, any uh, comments, Darth Vader, about the cool stuff we could invent with this uh, physics? Don't be too proud of this technological terror you've constructed. Boy, Darth, I, I can't, you know, you, you seem kind of negative here. You don't seem, like, very positive. Do you, you have anything positive to say? Wow, okay. All right, Darth. Well, nice work, AP Physics students. Uh, say, speaking of the dark side, a uh, really cool article in uh, Discover Magazine this month uh, that I'm going to show you here um, about, speaking of the dark side, uh, how about the dark side of the story of the universe? All right. Do you guys know that according to our most recent theory, that of all the matter in the universe, only about 5% of it is normal matter, like in the terms of atoms and protons and electrons and ordinary matter. Up to 24% of the use of observable universe is dark matter. That is ordinary matter, but we don't know what it is. Um, and 71% of the mass energy of the universe is dark energy. Uh, and look, this is a scientific magazine. What does it say dark energy is? No one has any idea what our dark energy is. It acts in opposition to gravity, okay? Uh, so anyway, uh, maybe the dark side, maybe we should all go to the dark side because there's a lot of dark matter and dark energy in the universe that we don't know what it is. All right, nice work, AP Physics students. We'll see you tomorrow.